confirm that all the members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the, in the affirmative. So, um, do that next. So, Mo Ward? Here. Chuck Courts? Here. Doug DeLay? Here. Keith Kent? Here. Dave Alexander? Here. Okay, Phil Levine? All right, Phil's not here. So we have six members present. Um, so good evening. This open meeting of the Finance Committee is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's recent executive order, March 12th, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. So the order which you can find posted uh, with agenda materials for this meeting allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded to the public uh, and the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. And that's my understanding that uh, this is being broadcast uh, as we see it um, on um, the cable TV network. All right, let me switch to there. Now I can see everybody. <clears throat> so ensuring uh, public access does not ensure public participation unless participation is required by law. And in our posting, uh, this meeting will feature an opportunity for public con comment at the end of the meeting. Um, so the, our meeting is being conveyed uh, by video conference via Zoom on the town, says post on the town's website. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and take care not to screen share on your computer. Anything you broadcast may be captured in the recording. Um, I think that all of our meeting materials, uh, uh, the only meeting materials tonight are the um, year to date reports. Um, as the, on the ground rules, I'd like to, just so we can keep this um, um, orderly, um, I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. Um, after they've concluded their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members inviting each of them by name to provide any other comment, questions, or motions. Um, so hold until your name is called. Obviously, it's not how we usually... <laughs> um, conduct our meetings uh, where we're a little more informal. That's not my nature to be formal, so it might end up informal anyway. Um, in terms of items of public content, uh, that's at the end of the meeting. Um, and after all members have spoken, uh, we will afford a public comment um, at the end of the meeting. All right, I think we're ready to roll. So first item of the agenda, with approval of minutes. We only have two sets of minutes. We have minutes uh, from the February 10th um, tribe board meeting, and we have uh, minutes from the uh, March 9th meeting. Uh, I got an email from uh, Brianna. She um, did not get the, the uh, uh, recording of the March 10th meeting before we went into quarantine. Um, and she's still hoping to get the, the March 26th meeting. Um, I, I'm assuming she should get a tape of, of our video or our, our video uh, uh, remote uh, meeting uh, as it was broadcast. Um, but I would ask, Mo, could you take some notes tonight just sure. in case yeah. we, we end up uh, um, in a situation where Brianna can't get to the minutes. Okay. Thank you. You want to start with a salute to the flag, Tom? Sure. We've got I got one. But... <laughs> all right. Mo has a flag. <laughs> all right. Um, we can all rise, I guess. Um, all right. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Yeah. flag. Of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Nice work, Mo. 
Yeah, thanks for the visual aids, Mo. Listen to the sure. Put that in the minutes. Mo provided visual aids. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so I didn't take a motion uh, on the, the minutes of February 10th. So what? Uh, okay. There was Do I hear a second? Is there a second? Second. Right. Second. Any discussion on the minutes of February 10th? All right, hearing none, I entertain a vote. Um, and when I call your name, um, please vote uh, yes or no, or approve or disapprove. Uh, the motion is to approve, so it's yes or no for the motion. All right, uh, Keith Kent? Aye. All right, and uh, Mo Watt? Aye. Doug DeLay? Aye. Dave Alexander? Aye. And Chuck Quartz. Aye. All right. And the chair votes aye. And um, for the minutes, I entertain a, a motion to approve the minutes of March 9th. So moved. All right. Seconded. And seconded. Any okay. discussion on the minutes of March 9th? All right. Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Uh, Mr. Kent? Aye. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Ward. Aye. All right, Mr. Delay. Aye. All right, Mr. Alexander. Aye. And Mr. Quartz. Aye. And the chair abstains. And is that meeting? All right. Let's move along to the uh, year to date reports. Um, This was a month where we got the expense reports, but not the revenue reports. Um, Joanne added several um, notes to the reports that I thought were helpful. Um, the, I think the, the biggest uh, issue in the reports uh, has to do with the health insurance. I mean, this is something we saw coming uh, back in the fall. If you remember, we, we had noted on, on a couple of occasions that the um, that, that that line item was being expended at a faster rate than uh, would appear to be if we were going to get through the whole year. Um, as you can see, they're estimating that we'll. Um, be shot somewhere between a hundred and actually for the active members, it would be somewhere between one hundred thirty-nine and one hundred forty-seven thousand um, dollars. On the retiree side, um, there's an estimated overage of about twenty-nine thousand uh, dollars. So the net is going to be somewhere between one hundred and eighteen, one hundred ten, one hundred eighteen thousand dollars. I did talk to. Um, town manager about about this. Um, it's it's due to an increase in the number of people taking the health insurance through the town. If you remember, um, the last couple of years, the town has uh, as it's generated free cash. A good chunk of that free cash came from health insurance, where the health insurance was budgeted a greater amount than it actually used. And the reason for that was, I think when they moved away from um, Blue Cross Blue Shields and, and went to the, the, the state um, uh, plan, several, a number of people in town, uh, employees in town, uh, uh, employer east in town, opted to take a different insurance plan, perhaps their spouse's insurance plan. Um, so the amount of people actually taking the insurance decreased. So the amount of money spent on health insurance decreased. And there was some pretty good savings uh, in those accounts. This year, it looks like just the reverse has happened. Um, we budgeted for the increase in the, in the rates, um, but obviously didn't budget uh, for an increase in the number of people who opt to take the insurance. Uh, I'm not sure when the 
the, the opt-in date is and how that works exactly. But, you know, clearly the number gets put, put together um, in December, January uh, on a projection. And uh, uh, the opportunity for new hires and, and other people to take advantage of the insurance is still out in the future when he puts that number together. So that's where we are with that. Um, comments, thoughts? If you just raise your hand, I'll call on you. <laughs> well, I think we should give Joanne a shout out because I really like the errata sheet that she did at the beginning. It helps a lot. Mm -hmm. I will. I will give her that feedback. Yeah, um, yeah it does. I mean, it, one, it, it, when you're going through it, when I was going through it, you know, there was already an explanation for any of the, the line items that were in a negative. Um, and, and, and also a couple of things that will, not in a negative, but will require a transfer before the end of the year. Maybe we, could get, maybe we could get the school to do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> Put it on my wish list. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, other, other comments about the, the town report before we get into the school report? Well, yes, Doug. Hey, um, I just had a question. I know that there was a, might have been in Joanne's uh, notes, but there was a comment about transportation, um, that there would be some, likely some savings because of the school closures. And I mean, it certainly looks at this point like the closure is going to extend beyond the you know, the original estimate, if not for the entire year. Um, does, is it too early to have a feel for what recovery there might be from that? Well, that's something I, I talked with, uh, with Keith about. Um, because my, my feeling is it's not too early. It's, it's something we should be getting on top of right now. There, you know, there are, I talked to him about other possible expenses that the town might uh, realize um, um, beyond what it's been budgeted. Uh, what came to mind for me was unemployment. He said, well, on the town side, there's really hasn't been anybody let go. So he doesn't anticipate an increase in the unemployment. Um, and, but then on the flip side, we said they, there might be savings involved too. There might be contractual services that we're not using. You know, we've got a library that's closed, it's not using, um, it's paying staff, but it's, it's not using some of the expenses. The same thing is true with, with several aspects. And what I had suggested to him is that that he and, and, and Joanne go through the, the budget line item by line item and identify ones that might have potential savings. Clearly, the um, school transportation is a, is, are big numbers and they have the potential for some savings. Special education, I know, usually a contract um, deals with cost per mile and time. Those are the two factors because it's a variable um, service. It, it depends on the numbers of kids uh, who need to be transported and that number can change during the course of the year. So usually a contract uh, for special education, um, if it's not going on, one would assume that you're not being charged for, for those services. The, the, the regular transportation uh, contract is, is typically a service, an annual amount, um, and so that's going to be negotiated a little bit differently. He told me that, that Joan was looking into just that, that, that. That's a question, obviously, for school districts all over the state. How do they handle transportation uh, uh, contracts? Um, I think on the school side, that just as there is on the town side, I think every line item needs to be looked at to identify potential savings. You know, for instance, the athletics programs that have been canceled aren't going to be made up. So you got referees that aren't going to be paid. You got transportation that's not going to be used. You got. Uh, um, coach fees. stipends that may not be moved. Fees. So what's that? You wouldn't have fees for each activity because they would be canceled. 
quite so I mean on that side there might be some loss of revenue uh, yeah. because you're not charging you know fees um, so I, I mean it just it's I think it's important now we've got one quarter left in the in the fiscal year to for both the school schools particularly because I think that you're going to find that there are more expense accounts that are impacted by the closing of the schools than might be true on the town side because most of the services are still being provided one way or another. Um, but I think that's, I think that's going to be done. Um, the year today is not going to make any sense, uh, mm-hmm. particularly on the school side, um, if if some things are frozen in place. I mean, they're contracted services for special education um, uh, programs. Um, so I think that's something that's going to be looked at. Statewide, go ahead, Bill. I think that's going to be a catch-22 because some of our contracted services is also paid through the feds and the state, and we won't be re- getting that reimbursement because we haven't used it. So you have your psychologist, you have your out-of-district placements, you have all of those uh, mental health evals right. that aren't going to be done, plus your Medicaid reimbursements won't be done. So you're going to maybe save, but you're also going to lose some revenue back to the school. It's going to be complicated for a while. It's going to be very complicated. And, and you've got net school spending right in there, too. So and they're going to have to throw that out. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. So th- and obviously, th- those issues are issues that every school district in the state is going to have to deal with. Um, I just think if we can get ahead of it and the school department can get ahead of it um, in beginning identifying those areas, what are the revenues that might be at risk if services aren't taking place uh, that those revenues were intended for? Um, well, they've even talked about maybe delaying the start of this increase to education from the state until next year because they've lost the revenue that they were going to put into augmenting schools. So those ones that have already done their budget might have a shortfall. Yeah. Other thoughts from other members? No, we made it really down for them. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I think it's uh, certainly the, the context of the comment uh, talking about, you, you know, we were shot $100,000 plus on the health insurance, but we're already beginning to look at where we might be able to make that up in the budget. And that, that special education transportation, um, homeless transportation, both of those items uh, are areas where if there's no service, there shouldn't be any uh, any, any payments going out. Uh, that not, may not be true for the general contractor for the, um, uh, you know, for the regular transportation program. Uh, and then there's, there's few other things that you noted in there, there's a surplus, estimated surplus of about $25,000 in Medicare costs. They're anticipating about 54000 in veterans costs, although that may change um, between now and, and the end of June um, with the amount of unemployment that's going on. Um, because electricity costs are down, you know, in all departments. So I, I think they're very hopeful that they can cover that shortfall. Um, but, but beyond that, I think we, you know, we need to be looking at what kinds of savings might be out there that would end up creating some free cash at the end of the year. Um, if indeed there's more to be seen in savings than there is in lost revenue. Yes, that um, other question. Um, it, it's unrelated, but were we supposed to have the revenues this because we're at the end of the quarter or is it, we're not going to see that till next month? I think we'll, yeah, I, I think when we asked um, Cali to, to, to uh, do it on a, on a, on a quarterly basis, <laughs> wherever she sat in it. And I don't think it was at the end of a particular quarter. Um, so it's not in the sync with, with, with the quarterly report. But I think next year, that's what we would want to see, yeah. quarterly report. I'm anxious to see it now. And I think that 
it'll be interesting to look at because I would think there's certainly a possibility that all of the shutdown has, has had an impact on the town's revenue um, forecasts. I mean, if people are, are, are tardy and getting their, their real estate taxes in when they're due, um, and certainly there seems to be <clears throat> a lot of activity to try to give people leeway. Uh, I think, in, I think they've extended period. the deadline. Yeah. Oh, well, I know they are with the with the uh, uh, you know, personal income tax. Yeah. Um, I don't know if each town has to decide whether they extend the deadline for property tax or if that's a statewide movement. I just I think they did. Maybe Selectman Ward can look up in his minutes there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mr. Kent. Question, Mr. Chair. Talking about um, different parts of our town looking to save money during this time. Do we know, Mr. Chair, if places such as our public schools that have a high oil usage for heat, do we know for say, is there the possibility that they've turned down the current operating temperature in the schools since they don't have to heat it for children and teachers right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I gotta presume that they're doing what they can to, to reduce their expenses uh, with, with that. Electricity is another one, uh, Keith. Um, so we'd hope to see some savings, you know, in those areas. I was thinking places like the school, the public library, things like that, yeah. that hopefully they turn down the temperatures. I'm not saying they didn't. I'm just saying hopefully they did to save on the oil costs. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, yes. The so, library is still open for staff. They're still going in periodically to do recording and cleaning and mm -hmm. record, whatever they are, but when they're gone, they do shut everything down. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, yeah we're getting to the time of the year too, where you can truly shut things down. That's right. Um, and still maintain you know, some level of, of uh, comfort in the buildings. Um, but the, you know, it's a good question. And certainly if they're not, they, they should be by now. Yeah. Thank you. Other questions or comments on the um, the uh, you know, I did identify a, a, a couple of things in the school department um, near to dates. There was some question we had about um literacy coach at toy town if you remember there was a line item for the literacy coach at toy town at twenty eight thousand dollars that hadn't been used at all but there's another line item that was a new one that um i think it just got renamed uh, to a different position um so we had a few questions i'm not sure if this Jones around or if they if, they, if everybody's working from home over there but I want to try to contact her um, particularly to talk to her about um, the idea of, of doing some projections on expenses that may not be necessary and how that might impact revenues on the other side of it um, and again as they said every, every school in the, in the state's going to be dealing with the same thing Right. You know, the kids who are at, at a district placements, I don't know um, what those schools are doing to um, provide services. I assume they're doing the same thing that the public schools are doing, you know, trying to do some uh, remote uh, programming. Um, so it'd be good to know how that's being handled. Right. Any questions on on the um, enterprise funds? No. Um, yes, this is Rick Ward. Uh, just, just to bring up that thing about delay in paying taxes. Yeah, real estate and personal property taxes, which were typically due on May 1st, will now be due June 1st in town. And uh, 
The deadline to apply for exemptions on taxes has been extended to June 1st. And any additionally interest and penalties will be waived on any property and excise tax, betterment assessments, water or sewer bills with a due date on or after March 10th if payment is made by June 30th. So things have been moved down the road. Okay, that's good to know. So roughly a month down the road and then a month penalties out two months. Yeah, yeah. great. Good. All right, if there's no other questions, uh, comments on the year to date, uh, we'll move on to the next agenda item, which is the postponement of the town meeting elections and the impact it has on on um, on the uh, the whole budget meeting uh, town meeting calendar. Uh, again, I talked with um, Mr. Hickey about this a little bit. Um, apparently, he's the discussion right now. I don't know if they've settled on a date, but they want to do it at the end of June. And the hope is that by the end of June, uh, people can assemble uh, for um, safely for uh, and, and would be able to run a, a typical town meeting. At least that's that's the, the hope right now. Um, so clearly, our, our two things, that, two immediate impacts. One, tonight we would have been um, reviewing the final warrant, but the date for the warrants pushed out. Um, so the warrant continues to be open. Its closure has to do with a certain number of days prior to town meeting. 45. Um, 45? Right. Okay. Um, so um, it'll be May anyway before the, the, uh, uh, the warrant closes. And at that point, you know, we'll meet and discuss the, the warrant. The other, um, the other meeting is is our public hearing, which would have been scheduled for a couple of weeks from now, um, and that obviously is going to be put off. I would imagine early early June, um, two or three weeks before the the uh, town meeting. Uh, so it's going to throw us off a little bit. It means we don't have another meeting this month. Um, there's um, I think the school department might be hosting a tri board meeting in May. Uh, I think that's still up in the air right now. It's, I haven't heard anything uh, definitive about that. Um, but um, it's out there. Yes, Ms. Ward. I just, I just wonder the purpose of a tri board meeting at this time because we usually do the tri board to sort of bring about the state of our finances, the state of where we are at in our budgets, but we don't know that and we won't know that until we figure out what we're saving, what we're spending, what's come in, what hasn't come in. And it just seems like an exercise in futility to sit there and talk with all these folks on, on maybes. Well, yeah, I guess what I'm hoping, or was hoping is that it would um, set a goal to get that information uh, because I think you know certainly I think it would be helpful before town meeting for us to have that that meeting so I I, I think in planning it if school department doesn't think they could get that information by then uh, the town doesn't can't get that information yeah then I agree with it I'd say, yeah. I'd, say I'd say put it off but I, I think it would be helpful to have a tri board meeting to discuss the impact on finances, uh, both for this year or for next year, both. As uh, long as we had information, because if we just hear it's yeah. going to impact, uh, yeah, we know that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, that, that's a good point. I mean, just to sit down and say, well, you know, we got all these questions and nobody has any answers. Nobody has any answers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not much of a reason to uh, me. To, to me. All right. I'm not sure why I'm getting there. I'm showing the meeting. Yes. <laughs> we, we were able to see you, now we're not. Yes. Hi, Tom. Whatever you clicked on, we've lost our leader. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's give him a couple of minutes to see if he can boot back up. I'm sure he's trying diligently. 
Linda, are you still there? Yes, I am. Can you see anything, activity from Tom? I'm looking here. I'm waiting to see him again, and then I'll add him back in. Okay. Maybe he took your comment to heart, Mo. If you don't have any interest, <laughs> we just don't meet. It's like, okay, I'm gone. <laughs> Madam Vice Chair, I was actually told earlier by a person who serves in another town using the Zoom app, if they use the Firefox browser, they actually got accidentally booted off of Zoom more so than if they use something such as uh, Chrome. So that could be. Well, we can keep going. I, I think we kind of said everything we needed to say on the tri board meeting. So let's go with member comments. Keith, do you have anything? He's coming. No, ma'am. Uh, Doug? I do not. Oh, there's Tom. There he is. I do not. Back. Okay, I'm on <laughs> member comments. <laughs> Keith, <laughs> Keith had nothing to say, and we're on Doug now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> He's still on the learning curve. Mm -hmm. Talk about flattening the curve. <laughs> <laughs> I had no comment. No yeah. comment from Doug. We're at Dave. No comment. Chuck. All set. The only thing I have is I just wanted to give a shout out to Tracy Murphy. She managed to snag a $50,000 grant for repairs to the senior center. So kudos to Tracy. Wow. Great. Yeah, that was nice. So now, Tom, it's back to you for comments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just going to zoom out of here. That's what I'm <laughs> Before I break something else, there's something else wrong. Um, any uh, any input from the public? Public's happy. Nothing. All right. We thank the public for all the valuable information you shared with us tonight. <laughs> motion to adjourn. Yeah, motion to adjourn. Second. Three. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, I'm not going to do it wrong. Aye. Aye. <laughs>